want to walk, I want to walk in the newness of life. So let me be a follower of Christ. In the name of Jesus, what do I have to do? Push that up a little bit. What do I have to say? Push that up a little bit. I have to walk each and every day. Tell me how much, tell me how much does it cost to carry the cross? So let me be, so let me be a follower of Christ. What do I have to do? What do I have to do? What do I have to say? What do I have to say? How do I have to walk? How do I have to walk each and every day? And every day, tell me how much, tell me how much does it cost to carry, to carry the cross. So let me be a follower of Christ. What do I have to do what do I have to say how do I have to walk each and every day tell me how much tell me how much does it cost to carry the cross so let me be of Christ wow look what we have here Zalus Sinj Sine Bailey you may be seated everyone Bailey what a joy it is to Zayla what a joy it is to have you here today and to baptize you unto the Lord on today. We now come to baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. All right. So let me be a follower of Christ what do I have to do what do I have to say how do I have to walk Naya Chantrice Burrell what a joy it is to have you here this morning it looks like that water might be cold all right, it'll be over in a minute. Come on, just take the formation. Are you ready? With great joy. Now we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Oh, 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 what do I have to do? What do I have to say? How do I have to walk each and every day? Tell me how much does it cost to carry the cross? All right. Orlando Ezekiel Wiggins, what a joy it is to have you here today to baptize you in the name of the Lord. Are you ready, Orlando? All right, turn around. 
Grab your notes. We now come to baptize you, Orlando, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. There you go. A follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. All right, Kina Lachey Jones. What a joy it is to have you here to baptize you today in the name of the Lord. Are you ready? Turn around. There you go. Kina Lachey Jones, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. have to do what do I have to say how do I have to walk each and every day tell me how Renee and Lucas welcome with great joy we now baptize you unto the Lord. Are you ready, Renee? With great joy, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. My, my, my. Have to do What do I have to say? How do I have to walk each and every day? Tell me how much does it cost to carry the cross? All right, Wilbert. Antonio Banks, with great joy, we're ready to baptize you, sir. We now baptize Wilbert Antonio Banks in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Mama, that's it. Mm, what do I have to say each and every day? Tell me how much does it cost? His name is Jeremiah James Holloman. Brother Jeremiah, you ready? There you go. Turn around the other way. We're ready. Jeremiah, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. That's it. Have to do. What do I have to say? How do I have to walk each and every day? His name is Kenneth Brown. Brother Brown, we're ready if you are. You ready? Turn around. With great joy, Brother Kenneth Brown, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. That's it. Have to do What do I have to say? How do I have to walk Each and every Every day. Amen. His name is Charles Emmanuel. What a name. Turner. Are you ready, Brother Charles? Amen. Brother Charles Emmanuel Turner, with great joy, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Let's give God a praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Mr. Gordon. 
Would you stand, everyone? Let's give God another hand for these souls in the name of Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning, church family, and those who may be tuned in to us. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in him. For God woke us up this morning and started us on our way in the name of Jesus. We greet you. We will now have our vision and mission statement. Let us read with enthusiasm, making disciples of all nations through the transforming power of Jesus Christ in the spirit of excellence. Let us read together our statement of mission and purpose to bring people to Jesus Christ and membership in his family through effective evangelism. Love and affirm them through warm and genuine fellowship. Develop them to Christ-like maturity through systematic discipleship. Prepare and equip them through sound biblical training to be sent out for missions and ministry to the end that God's name be worshiped, exalted, and magnified throughout all the earth. Amen. I call to worship Luke 2. 7 through 14. And she brought forth her firstborn son, let us read together, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. But unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you today with humble hearts, God. Thanking you, God, for life, health, and strength. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. God, we love you, we praise you, we magnify you, for there is none like you in all the earth. God, we thank you for the word that's going to be given today, God. Let it touch hearts, let it touch minds, let it touch souls, that those who are bound will be delivered, and those who are unsaved may be saved. God, we thank you. We cannot thank you enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. You may join in or you may be seated with our praise team today. In the name of Jesus.
Amen. Amen. Those that can stand, let's stand and encourage our young children. Amen. They were beautiful. To God be the glory. Amen. Joy to the world. It's prayer time. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be careful, anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Deaconess Iris Whitby will now lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. Good morning, saints of God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 34, 1 through 3 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So, Lord, let us just come before your throne of grace if all hearts and minds are clear. Dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, a few of your humble servants have gathered together in your house once again just to give your name, praise, glory, and honor. Lord, we just thank you for being so good to each and every one of us, God. Lord, we thank you for our safe arrivals. Lord, we thank you that all that did not find a robbery to come to your house once again. And Lord, we pray that you would bless all of those who are on social media watching as well. Lord, before we move any further, we just want to pause and ask for forgiveness of our sin. Lord, we know somewhere along the way we may have said, done, thought, or even imagined something that was not pleasing in your sight. Lord, we pray that you would clean us up once again. And Lord, we pray that you would throw our sins in the sea of forgiveness and it would not return back to us again. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to just lift up our bereaved families on today, God. Lord, we know that there are bereavements that's going around and there has been uh, lost loved ones that have been lost. And Lord, we just pray that you will wrap your loving arms around those that have went uh, before you in glory, God. Lord, we pray that you will encourage your families. And Lord, we pray that you would dry up weeping eyes. And God, give them strength where they are weak and build them up where they may, may be worn and torn down. Lord, we pray that you will go and bless those that are in the rest homes and the hospitals. Lord, we know that you are a doctor in the sick room, God. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, for just putting your hands of mercy on them, God. Lord, someone may have come in here today with a hung down head. They may be in trouble in a marriage, God. They might got a pink slip on their job, God. But Lord, we know that you are God, that you can do all things but fail. Lord, your eyes are over the righteous and your ears are always open to our cry. God, your word tells us to cast our cares upon you for you care for us, God. God, your word also says that weeping man do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless this nation, this country. Lord, we pray that you would bless all countries all over this entire global village. Lord, we pray that you would bless our president, our vice president, all those that are in government, God. God, your word tells us that we are to respect those that are in high places of authority. So, Lord, we pray that you would put your loving arms around them. Lord, we pray that you would bless our pastor on this morning, God. Lord, as he brings the word, Lord, we pray that someone will want to come running knowing what must I do to be saved. Lord, we pray that you will lift them up, build them up, God. And Lord, when he's worn and torn down, God, we pray that you would strengthen him. Lord, continue to bless his entire family, First Lady and Josiah and the entire James family. Family, Lord, we just thank you, God. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough for us to thank you for all your goodness and all your mercy, God, that you continue to give us each and every day. Lord, we just thank you, God, that you've brought us this far in 2023, God. And Lord, we just thank you, God, because, Lord, we could have been gone, but God, because of your grace and because of your mercy, we are still here. And Lord, for that, we just want to give you a great big thank you, God, 
Lord, we thank you, God, for being Jehovah Jireh, God. God, you are the God that provides. God, we thank you for being Jehovah Sitkanu. You are the God that's everywhere at the same time. God, we thank you for being Jehovah Shalom. You are the God that gives us peace that surpasses even our own understanding. God, we thank you for being Jehovah uh, Nisi, God. You are our strong banner. God, we thank you for being all that and so much more, God. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, trouble is everywhere, God. Every time we look around, there's trouble on the left. There's trouble on the right. But, God, we serve, preserve a God that can do everything but fail, God. So, Lord, we thank you for being by our sides, God. Lord, we thank you for making the rough edges smooth and the crooked edges straight in our lives, God. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that we all will love, learn how to love on one another, God. And God, just uh, share a little bit more joy. And Lord, just call our neighbor and our friends, God, every once in a while, just to check on them and just to see how they're doing. Because Lord, a lot of times when people are smiling on the outside, God, they're suffering in silence on the inside. So Lord, let us just be more Christian-like towards one another, God, and say kind words, God. Lord, we just thank you, God. If we can't thank you enough, God, if we had said it a thousand times, it wouldn't be enough, God. Lord, we just thank you, God. We bless your holy name, God. God, we just love you, God. God, and your word says in Isaiah 28, 30, 28, 40, 28 through 31, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and to them that has no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. God, your word also tells us that if we abide in you and your word abide in us, God, Lord, we can ask anything that we will, and it shall be done unto us. God, your word says, also, God, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. God, your word also tells us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts, lean out until our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge you and God you said that you would direct our path Lord your word also tells us but without faith it is impossible to please you for he that comes to you must believe that you are and that you are a rewarder to them that diligently seek you so God we thank you for your word God we standing on your word Lord we can't make it without your word Lord continue to let us get on bended knees God and just pray and God seek your face and Lord you say that we turn from our wicked ways then you will hear from heaven. You will forgive our sins and heal our land. And Lord, our land could sure need some healing right now, God. So Lord, we thank you, God. We bless your holy name, God. And Lord, we will ever be so quick and ever be so careful to give your name all the praise, God, and all the glory, God, that is due your name. And Lord, this is the confidence that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, God, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of you, God. So, Lord, saints, just let us continue to lean on God. Lord, let us just continue to trust in them, God. Lord, if we walk with God, sickness will go away. Lord, if we continue to walk with you, God, demons will tremble, God, in the name of Jesus. God, your word tells us that if we resist the devil, then he will flee from us every time. So, Lord, we rebuke the devil right now in the name of Jesus because we know that his job is to kill, steal, and destroy by any means necessary. So, Lord, we cast him away and we send him back to the pit of hell from whence he come from. So Lord, we thank you. We give your name all the praise. We give your name all the glory. This do your name for these and all blessings that we do pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And let everyone that's under the sound of my voice say amen.
God is truly using our youth today. We admonish those that's on YouTube, Facebook, in the sanctuary. Bring your children. Bring your grandchildren. Bring your great-grandchildren so that they may be used by God. Forgiving will be followed by our video announcements, during which time our ushers may begin to receive the in-house offering, and all members are asked to please print your name and number on your giving envelope clearly and legibly. Thank you. Let us stand for our litany of cheerful giving. I'll be the leader. Deaconess Iris Whitby will lead in the people. No room in the end. This Christmas story reminds us of how there was no room in the end for Mary and Joseph as she was about to give birth to your only begotten son, our Savior. Father, since that time, we've learned that the ends of Bethlehem are not the only places that are full, overcrowded, and have no room for your son, our Savior. Lord, if the truth be told, our lives are so full, so busy, and sometimes our hearts are filled with so many cares and concerns until there is no room for you to take up residence to rule and reign. Forgive us, Lord, for not making room in our busy schedules to pray fervently worship you intimately, praise you passionately, and learn of you consistently. Lord Jesus, as we prepare to celebrate your holy birth, may we always remember, in the midst of the hustle and bustle, the gift wrapping and gift giving, the turkey and the dressing, the fruit, the nuts, and the candies, that you are the reason for this season. For if it had not been for your choosing to be born in a manger, a tarp of animals wrapped in swaddling clothes, coarse clothes used to wrap a newborn animal, Lord, we would not have what we have today, and surely we would not be who we are today. Lord Jesus, because of your sacrificial birth, life, death, and resurrection, we are, of all men and women, most blessed and highly favored. And if we prepare our hearts to worship in the giving of our tithes and offering, may we give our best gifts, recognizing and realizing that on the first Christmas, God our Father, you gave the very best that you had to give, the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the reason for the season. For we know that, everyone, God, God loves, loves a, a cheerful, cheerful giver. giver. Amen. 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 You may be seated as we have our video announcements. Good morning, Mount Gilead. Facebook, YouTube family and friends, and ministry partners around the world. Welcome to Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church. Please listen to the following announcements. And our worship celebration will continue in just a moment. Greetings, Mount Gilead family. As we approach the close of 2023, we, your financial team, are requesting that all requisitions be submitted no later than Thursday, December 14th, 2023. 
Please remember that we ask for requisitions to be submitted approximately two weeks prior to the date in which the funds are needed. We thank you in advance. Many blessings. Shayna D. Warren, Treasurer, Deaconess Glennis Preston, Financial Secretary. MGMBC will sponsor 150 children through the virtual angel tree process. This method does not require any shopping or the wrapping of gifts. It only requires $30 to sponsor a child. The Angel Tree Committee will be available each Sunday after church, leading up to the deadline of December 17th. The in-person sponsorship can be made with cash or check payment, payable to Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church. Electronic payments can also be accepted using our virtual Angel Tree link, angeltreetool.org. That's angeltreetool.org. For more information or questions, please contact Deaconess Trina Peters. Thank you. The Evangelism Outreach Ministry of MGMBC presents Tis the Season to be Jolly. We will be blessing families of MGMBC, Tanner's Creek, and Norview Elementary Schools with gift cards on Sunday, December 17th. After the 10 a.m. service, you must be present to receive your gift card. Register first come first served online at www.mount-gilead.com from December 1st to December 15th. For more information, please contact Minister Teresa Gordon at 757-289-7088. The OMCLC presents the annual Christmas Candlelight Service. Join us for a special celebration on Wednesday, December 13th at 7 p.m. in the MGMBC Family Life Center featuring the Booker T. Washington Marching Band. And it's that time of year again. Our annual 40 days of fasting and prayer, voluntary normal fasting, water drinking only, any 12-hour portion of the day, and the emphasis is on prayer. Join us January 2nd to February 10th. Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church tribal leaders will lead their tribes in prayer on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Email three brief requests with name and birth month to Shelton Murphy at cox.net or church secretary at mountgilead.com. The now generation of MGMBC invites all from ages 2 to 92 to Gospel Skate Night on Monday, December 18th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. for skaters and non-skaters. Registration deadline is December 10th. This will take place at Greenbrier Family Skating Center. For more information, please contact Sister Pamela Briggs at 757-869-3217. MGMBC is looking for a few faithful men and women to serve as ordained deacons and deaconess servant leaders. The 30-day application window is from November 15th to December 15th. All that are interested, please complete and submit the servant leader application found on our website and send to Dr. Shelton Murphy. The six-month intensive training course will begin January 2024. There will be a special call meeting on Thursday, December 14th via Zoom.com to approve the proposed 2024 budget. All active members are asked to please be present. Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School takes place Sunday at 8.30 a.m. And now, what it means to give. Giving. What is its purpose? What can it accomplish? Through giving, we reach our community. Through giving, we spread the gospel. Through giving, we expand his kingdom. Through giving, we fight the darkness. We worship our creator. We feed the hungry. We clothe those in need. We embrace the lost. We heal the broken. We grow deeper in our faith. We fulfill our mission. And we glorify our King. Through giving, we recognize the One 
who gave us everything, who gave his very life. With hearts full of joy, let us show our love and proclaim his praises through giving. Here are some ways to give to support the ministry. Please mail all checks or money orders to Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church, 1057 Kennedy Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23513. You may download our MGMBC PushPay app today on your cell phone or give through our website, www.mount-gilead.com. You may also give in person as many of you will do today, or you may give via our MGMBC Cash App. And when giving through Cash App, please add your name and address. But by whatever method you choose to give, please know that from the bottom of our hearts, we sincerely thank you for your generous giving to Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church. For we all know that God loves a cheerful giver. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook at MGMBCVA. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, MGMBC Live. Thank you so very much for being a part of our worship celebration. God's peace, favor, and blessings to each of you. Amen, amen. We'll have our offertory prayer by Deaconess Whitby, Deaconess Iris Whitby. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just come to you and we're just lifting up this offering that we have received today. Lord, we just pray that you would bless those that gave and Lord, those that had wanted to give today, but for whatever reason they didn't have it, Lord, we pray that you would bless them and maybe the next time they will have it. Lord, we pray that these offerings will be lifted up to you, God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Because, Lord, we are never more like you than when we give. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So, Lord, we thank you for these offerings. In Jesus' name we pray and let the people of God say amen.
Amen, amen. I introduce to some and present to others our pastor, Dr. Shelton Murphy. Let's give him a big hand. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made, and because he's been so phenomenally good unto us, what are we going to do? Rejoice at, are you glad to be in God's house one more time? Would you stand to your feet if you're able? Would you stand to your feet if you're able? Amen, amen. I want to get you on your feet so you can turn and greet your neighbor. Good morning. God bless you. Great to see you. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me give you a few um, highlights of things that we need to just kind of etch into your memory. You know, as we get older, we tend to forget stuff. Am I right about it? <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes we need to hear stuff more than once. So um, the first thing I want to do is um, acknowledge, let me see if this will work for me here. There we go. Come on. Acknowledge and recognize our special guest, our visitors on today. Persons who are visiting with us today for the first time or maybe you've not visited in a long time, would you please stand? We love to recognize you this morning and bless you real good with a special gift. Amen, amen. One, two, three, four. Anybody else? Um, if you're visiting, I encourage you to stand. We have a gift for you, a real nice gift for you. It's a fabulous pen that when you click it, it lights up. And once you see it light up, it'll show you how to get back to Mount Gilead. Amen, amen. That's, there's the, the, that's, we call that the anointed pen. But nevertheless, remain standing as we serve you with our, our welcome packets on this morning. We want to say thank you so very much to those of you who are standing, who chose to come and worship with us this morning. We realize that the Lord has blessed the Hampton Roads area with so many great churches and so many anointed pastors. And if you had gone to any of them, we believe you would have been blessed. But we want you to know that you have blessed us. Because you, of your own volition, chose Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church as your place of worship on this December 10th, Sunday morning. And we appreciate and value your presence in the place. Am I right about it, family? Come on, let's celebrate them. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for coming. And if you're in the area anytime soon, please come back and visit with us again real soon. God's peace, favor, and blessings to you and your families. Can we shout amen, somebody? Amen. You may be seated. We'd like to extend Christian sympathy this morning to the family of Brother Amos Bill, Jerry Bill, Minister Cheryl Boone, Deaconess Gertrude Burton, uh, Emerita, and the family on, and family on the loss of his wife, their mom, her daughter, Sister Carolyn Bill. The homegoing celebration will be Monday, tomorrow, December 11th at 11 a.m. here at Mount Gilead. Uh, many of us know Sister Carolyn and what a blessed woman she was, what a strong Christian woman of faith she was. So we know she is somewhere enjoying the sights and sounds of heaven. Can we shout amen, somebody? Amen. Also, Christian sympathy is extended to the family of Sister Bernice Sharp Lewis. And this is really a thank you. We've already done this one, but to our Mount Gilead family, thank you so very much for all of your thoughts, cards, and prayers as we laid our mother and grandmother to rest. She has been reunited with her entire family. She was the last of 13. Amen. So thank you so much. Love, Bebe, Ernest, Brian, and Jamal. When I ask Bebe and her family if they would stand up, this is who this comes from today. Yeah. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Also, I want to remind you about the OMCLC Christmas Candlelight Celebration that's coming up with refreshments, I might add. <laughs> that's always a nice warm touch. Am I right about it? Christmas cookies and punch? Yeah. Well, anyway, it's going to be on Wednesday. And um, 
December 13th right here at Mount Gilead in the Family Life Center. And the reason why we're going to have it in the Family Life Center is that the, the uh, Booker T. Washington band, they need to stretch out. They need a little room. Their pews are a little bit constricting, and that center aisle just ain't big enough for them to get down and do what they really want to do. <laughs> so um, we're going to have them here. And, of course, we have the band director sitting right here with us. <laughs> Amen. Our very own minister of music, Mr. Vincent Johnson. So they were here last year and did a great job. So it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful evening, and it's our annual Christmas candlelight celebration on Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the Family Life Center. And also, I want to just bring your attention to the angel tree. Um, it's going very well. However, um, the angel tree, um, they're already up to, the goal was to do 150. So look at the Lord. They're already up to 125 children sponsored. Yeah. They're already up to 125 children sponsored. And they'll have a table set up at the front door by, by Kennedy Street as well as at the back door by the bookstore. All right, we're going to get you going and coming. Although our goal was 150 children, Angel Tree has reached out for help to sponsor as many as possible due to the shortage of church sponsors in the rural areas. So if we can surpass 150, that would be great. Can, can we say amen? So if you have not sponsored a child, and it's only $30, so you don't have to go buy a gift, you don't have to wrap anything, you ain't got to get into traffic or stand in long lines, just stroke that check, or uh, for $30, we'll give cash $30 to, to, to the ladies who are going to be at the front door or at the back door of our church, and they'll be more than glad uh, to uh, take your sponsorship so that some wonderful child will wake up on Christmas morning um, with some Christmas toys. Can we say amen, somebody? Amen. amen. So that's what a blessing that is. And then we have another cause for celebration. Our, let me see, let me get it right here. Hold on. Find it. There it is. Okay. Our drummer. Yeah. He's also a football coach. And so he couldn't wait to tell me this. Yeah. I knew you were going to hit them drums, Chris. He couldn't wait to tell me this. Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. From the two time state champion. Yeah, they won the state championship. Come on, let's give the drummer some. Amen, somebody. <laughs> amen, amen. So I know he know that season is over. On the way in, on the way in, my wife told me, now y'all know the way I roll when it comes to football is whoever wins is my team. I ain't trying to lose for nobody. If you want to win, if you want to be my team, baby, you got to win. I'm a winner. Amen, somebody. Look, that's my choice. And as somebody said some song a long time ago, it's my prerogative. <laughs> but anyway, I know there's a big game today, so I got to get you out of here. Am I right about it? <laughs> Am I right about it, Dick Moore? <laughs> and I think it's the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, suck it, suck it now. Yeah. So on the way in, my wife is a Dallas Cowboys fan, and so, yeah. And so on the way in, she said, you know there's a big game today. And I said, well, who's playing? She said, the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. And so I said, well, which team wants to, wants, wants, which team wants to belong to me? I just want to know which one, which one, which one of them want to be my team? And she said, I think the Cowboys wants to be your team. <laughs> I said, well, we'll see. Am I right about it? So I know you'll be glued to the tube to see which team is going to, am I going to say hoorah for, amen, maybe even wear their dre jersey for a day. <laughs> amen, because if, if they want me to keep wearing their jersey, they, they got to do what? They got to keep on winning. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. But nevertheless, it's Christmas time, and um. We're just so grateful to have to be here because um, so many people have left us right here at this Christmas season. And today I'm taking a different turn. It's still a Christmas message. But I'm taking a chance and I'm just being led by the Lord. And I believe there's a strong anointing in the word. And, um, you know, sometimes at Christmas, it seems like a lot of people die around Thanksgiving and Christmas. 
And I remember one year, Deaconess Peters, one of our members, a uh, young brother, young brother, he died on Christmas Day. And I thought, wow, going forward for that family, Christmas is going to be bittersweet. Are you hearing me? Because it's also the time when they would celebrate the Lord, but it'll also the time, be forever be the time when they remembered when Daddy died. And to heighten my sensitivity, God allowed one of my older brothers, only have one left, to die on my birthday. And I said, Lord, really? <laughs> really? And his name was Alonzo. He died a few years back. And so I said, well, wow, if there was any other day to die, I'm, I'm grateful. So I will always remember my birthday, of course, and the date that he died and went to heaven. Amen. And one day when I get to heaven, I'll say, what's up with that? <laughs> I'll talk to him. Amen. But nevertheless, I want to ask you to stand so we can cheat a little bit and get the scripture out. And then after this great choir, come on and help me celebrate these great young people. Not be it's not before them, but it sounds like 40, doesn't they? Don't they? Amen. So we want to read the scripture at this time. And, um, and then after they have finished ministering to us, I'll come back with the good word of God. So here it is. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7 is the first one. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And then there's Isaiah 53, 1 through 5. Who has believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Somebody say grief. grief. Yeah. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. Somebody say griefs. Grief. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Would you get yourself a neighbor right quick? Say, neighbor. neighbor. We've got a, word today. got a word today. When God turns the pain of Christmas, pain of Christmas. Into, the joy of Christmas. into the joy of Christmas. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. When God turns the pain of Christmas into the joy of Christmas. Before the choir sings, would you help me celebrate Minister Teresa Gordon today? Great job serving in the poor pit this morning. Thank you so much. Come on, sing choir.
This is the way we praise him. Clap your hands. To God be the glory. Good morning, Mount Gilead. Just briefly before Pastor comes before us, just want to uh, let the uh, church know that on next Sunday, we will be celebrating Pastor's birthday. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for praise. Amen. Amen. So on next Sunday, uh, we will be giving ministries and individuals an opportunity uh, to say happy birthday to pass if you have a card or however you want to say happy birthday. Next Sunday will be that opportunity so that we can come together and collectively uh, celebrate uh, Pastor's birthday. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you. Let the church say amen. For the blessing and the beauty of this another day. God, thank you for another Sunday morning that you've allowed your people to gather together in this sanctuary on Facebook, YouTube, and other electronic platforms that we might worship you together in spirit and in truth. Thank you so much, God, for last night's rest and peace and safety and comfort. And this morning's awakening in the same. Thank you, Lord, that no bombs dropped in our nation. God, there was no earthquake happening. Lord, no tornadoes tore us up. We know that there was something that went down on, in Tennessee, and we pray for those individuals that you would please, God, be with them, give them the grace and strength to recover. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that things are as well with us as they are. And for this, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. We might have a few aches and pains here and there, but Lord, we know that there are persons who are far worse off. So we just want you to know that we're grateful for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace towards us. We thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to proclaim your word into the lives of your people. So, Father, we humbly ask that you will please one more time think through my mind and speak life through these lips of clay to the end, O oh God, that these your precious people who've gathered in this holy place will be encouraged, enriched, empowered, and equipped to run on and be and do all that you've created, purposed, and designed us to be and do. Help us not to just preach the gospel, God, but help us to be the gospel. Help us not to talk about it, but God, help us to be about it. In our everyday walk, in our everyday life, realizing that somebody is watching us, whether we know it or not. So, Father, we ask that you will save souls today, restore backsliders today, pull somebody out of the pit today. 
pull somebody out of the ditch today. God, pull somebody out of the dungeon of darkness and have your way in the lives of your people. We thank you for deliverance in this house on today for your glory and for the good of your people. We ask it in Jesus' name. We decree it and we declare it and we believe it to be so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I feel real prophetic today. So, beloved, as we come to celebrate the great goodness of our God this morning, I'd like to ask, do you know people who find it difficult, Elder Knight, to celebrate the joy of Christmas? Because the season recalls such painful memories. Whether we know it or not, this Christmas is going to, somebody's going to be without a husband. This Christmas, somebody's going to be without a father. This Christmas, somebody's going to be without mom. Amen. Some, this Christmas, somebody's going to be without someone that they loved so very much or something that they lost along the way. Let's not pretend that that's not a reality. Tell your neighbor, it's a reality. So today is a day for us to address it. Whether it's real or imagined, it seems that there are some, there are more deaths in the weeks before and after Thanksgiving and before and after Christmas than any other time of the year. Deacon Bradley, since there seems to be so many deaths during the holiday season, a group of social scientists decided to do a little digging and they dug deeper into what they consider to be somewhat of a phenomenon in terms of why does this seem to be happening? Deacon Moore, their review of the mortality rates in the United States during, difficult, during different times of the year has found that people are more likely to die during the holidays, namely Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the New Year. The social scientists analyzed all the official death certificates during a 25-year period in the U.S. between 1979 and 2004 and concluded that there has been an excess of 42,325 natural deaths in the two weeks around the Christmas holiday period. This excess is above and beyond what would be considered the normal seasonal increase in the death rate in the U.S. Deacon Brown, the study published in the Journal of Social Science and Medicine found that <coughs> more people die in hospital emergency wards or are DOA dead on arrival on Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, and New Year's Day than any other days of the year. Now, isn't that something? Deaconess McCray, the study said the chance of dying during the holiday period increases somewhere between 3 and 9 percent, depending on the demographic group you look at, and between 1 and 10 percent, depending on the cause of death analyzed. Stay with me, I promise you, there's some juice in here for you. Sad to say, but that makes Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the New Year, for some, a painful time of the year. For many people, a very painful time of the year. Yeah. Instead of feeling joyful, elated, and happy, they have painful memories of accidents, sicknesses, and deaths that occurred during this period. It's times like these, Valerie, when the pain of losses seem to linger, causing us to cling to the Word of God that challenges us to be so, not to be so overwhelmed by the circumstances of this life so that we will not become bitter. Beloved, despite the statistics, believers in Christ should intentionally and purposefully choose, somebody say choose, choose to think of and meditate upon the amazing gift of the Christ child given at Christmas and the fact that his birth 
represents God with us. And that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us and gave his life for us. Can anybody say amen right there? Mount Gilead, truth be told, Jesus himself had a difficult birth. Being born in a tiny town called Bethlehem of Judea in the poverty of the manger. And as his life on earth came to an end at the humiliating and shameful cross on that skull-shaped hill called Golgotha, his mother experienced the loss of her miracle-working son who had healing in his words and in his hands and even in the hem of his garment. <laughs> However, when the anniversary of his glorious birth and horrifying death rolled around Terry, each year his mother and perhaps members of the family celebrated not the sadistic horrifying death but his amazing, glorious, victorious, and triumphant resurrection over death, hell, and the grave. Even today, <clears throat> believers around the world, uh, Minister Kevin, celebrate both the birth of Christ and the death of Christ that has been made possible by the victorious resurrection of Christ. Beloved, here's your good news. The joy the hope and reality of the triumphant resurrection of Christ turns the pain and sorrow of Christmas into a joyful expectation and heartwarming experience. And as blood bought, blood washed, and redeemed children of the Most High God, we have learned that no matter what the circumstance or situation, an encounter and experience with the truth and reality of our living God can make life sweeter than sweet and better than good if we would just simply choose to purposefully and intentionally focus our heart, focus our mind, focus our thoughts, and focus our emotions on his divine love, his divine provisions, his divine protection, his divine presence, and his divine power, and rather than the pain and reality of what we lost. Come on, somebody. So, beloved, grieving the loss of a child, a mom or dad, a brother or sister, an aunt or uncle, a grandmother or grandfather, a husband or wife, a close friend, peep this, a dog or a cat, which sometimes feels like a family member. Grieving such is extremely painful, to say the least. Can we say amen, somebody? Or perhaps you're experiencing the loss of a relationship the loss of a marriage, the loss of a job, business, career, or reputation. And yes, grieving is more difficult and more challenging for some than it is for others. Amen, somebody. Stay with me. Let's get the balance here. And no one can regulate the timetable of our grief. Am I right about it? But Amy, the good news is if we heed the words of the prophet, Isaiah, and make a choice, make a choice, make a choice to keep our hearts, keep our thoughts, keep our imaginations, and keep our emotions, and keep our minds stayed on Jesus. He promised Michelle he would be with us and would never leave us nor forsake us. Tell your neighbor, that's good news. Yeah, and because he is with us, then we need to be reminded that this great God whom we serve, stay with me, he sees our pain and he understands. He sees our silent cries and he understands. He sees the nonstop tears in our eyes and he understands. He feels the lump in our throat and he understands. He knows about the pit in our stomach and he understands. He knows about the ache in our soul and he understands. He sees our desire to shut down and hide. Come on, somebody. And he understands. Oh, but the preacher has come with some good news from heaven. And that good news is simply this. God says, here's your prophetic word. Eternal grief is not your portion. 
portion. Eternal mourning is not your portion. Eternal distress is not your portion. Eternal sorrow, eternal regret, eternal isolation is not your portion. Eternal emotional pain, eternal heartache, eternal sadness is not your portion. Eternal anguish, torment, misery, failure is not your portion. Eternal poverty, disappointment, loneliness, emptiness is not your portion. Preach, Pastor Murphy. I'm doing the best I can. He says, because I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Therefore, lift up your hung down head and hear ye the word of the Lord. In spite of the loss, I have called you to a life of joy. Did you hear that? In spite of your loss, I've called you to a life of peace. In spite of your loss, I've called you to a life of power. I've called you to a life of purpose. I've called you to a life of love. I've called you to a life of ministry, a life of service, a life of devotion, a life of helping somebody, a life of healing. Yes, he died, but I called you. I called you. I called you to a life of growth, a life of fruitfulness, a life of productivity, a life of strength, a life of freedom, a life of victory. Oh, Jesus. And God says, if you stay in the ditch of despair and dis disappointment, it's because you're choosing to be there. Cry if you must, but at some point, baby, you got to wipe your eyes. At some point, you got to wipe your eyes. That's right. If you stay in the dungeon of darkness, isolation, and loneliness, it's because you're making a choice. If you stay in the bondage and pit of sadness, depression, fear, and anxiety, it's because you're choosing to be there. Pastor, that sounds kind of hard. Come here. David had been through sadness, grief, depression, fear, and anxiety. Oh, but I hear him saying in Psalm 40, 1 through 3, I wasted patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit of eternal sadness, a horrible pit of sorrow, a horrible pit of grief, a horrible pit of fear, a horrible pit of anxiety, a horrible pit of depression, a horrible pit, and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. How oh, beloved, this is for somebody today. Stay with me. I'm trying to be a little creative just to help you. In the midst of your sorrows, you need to lift up your voice and sing, You are my strength. In the midst of your sadness, you need to lift up your voice and sing, You are my strength. In the midst of your disappointment, you need to lift up your voice and sing, You are my strength. In the midst of your weakness, you need to find some way to lift up your voice and sing, You are my strength. In the midst of your torment, anguish, misery, and emptiness, you need to lift up your voice and say, You are my strength. Strength like no other. How many of you know he's our strength? He'll give you strength if you ask for it. He'll give you peace if you ask for it. He will help you. Oh, beloved, is there anybody here who knows without a doubt that in the midst of our sadness, in the midst of our disappointment, fear, weakness, torment, anguish, misery, failure, and emptiness, that the Lord God Almighty, the great El Shaddai, he's our strength, he's our peace, he's our joy, he's our hope, he's our sense of purpose and significance. If he's your strength today and you're not ashamed to give him praise, give him glory, give him honor, come on and help the preacher lift him up and give God the praise, the best praise you got because you are my strength. It hurts God, but you are my strength. 
My heart is broken, but you are my strength. I don't know what I'm going to do, but you are my strength. Oh, if you keep singing, baby, he'll lift your spirit. The jaw will begin to bubble up. Before you know it, things will look a little bit brighter. You'll find out grace to put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. I could give the benediction right there. <clears throat> well, now, as we come to our text today, Sister D, we find that this text focuses on Isaiah's prophecy of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And let me give you a footnote. Whatever you're going through, whoever you lost, look at your name and say, you're not the only one. Did you hear me? People all over the world have lost something or someone. Did you hear me? If we all just stop living because we lost something or someone, what in the world would happen to the world? But God has called us. He says, I've called you by name. Whew. The prophecy does not mention Jesus Christ by name, but refers to events that point directly to him. It often refers to the events in the past tense, uh, as if they had already happened. The prophecy makes it clear, Kathy, that someone is coming to advocate, support, and champion God's cause and be the savior of God's people. The identity of that someone is first presented in the 52nd chapter of Isaiah, beginning at verse 13, and is referred to only as God's servant, who would be lifted up and exalted. Well, now, when Christians read these passages, we see Jesus as the servant. However, throughout the centuries, the Jewish community has insisted that the servant referred to in these passages is the nation of Israel itself, even to the point of being bruised and wounded. Like many before them and after them, the Jewish community expected the Messiah to rise as an earthly king. And since Jesus did not accomplish that end, many Jewish persons have dismissed this text as referring to Christ because it does not appeal to their vision or picture of the Messiah who would come with kingly warrior might and power to deliver the nation of Israel. They expected their savior and deliverer to help them overthrow the Roman domination of their nation and to fulfill the promises of God to make the nation of Israel the chief of the nations of the earth. They wanted to be on top. Thus, the passages taken as a whole make it clear that the servant referred to in these scriptures is a person and not an entire nation. So, Deborah, that person, Jesus Christ himself, would come as a substitute for the sins of the people and would bear the penalty and punishment of their sins in his own body. The prophecy tracks and chronicles what Christ did for all who would choose to believe in him. The text says he was wounded for our transgressions. What are transgressions? Outward sins. Lying, stealing, cheating, committing adultery, stuff you can point to. He was bruised for our iniquities, inward sins of the heart, stuff you can't see. Envy, jealousy, strife, hatred. Ah. This indicates that the Messiah would absorb the pain, punishment, penalty, and suffering for the sins of the whole world. As a result, Annette, as a result of his act, the pain, punishment, penalty, and suffering for sin would not simply be relieved 
but eliminated because the source of the pain would have been satisfied. When verse 5 refers to stripes, the reference is made to physical pain that Jesus would endure for his followers. Deuteronomy 25, 1 through 3 notes that the Mosaic law prohibited anyone accused of an offense from receiving more than 40 lashes with the whip. Thus, the temple scourging, beating, was generally 39 lashes, creating 39 stripes on the backs of offenders. Matthew 27, 26 notes that Christ was ordered to be scourged as a possible alternative to the pain of crucifixion. That scourging produced strips or torn flesh, blood, and pain. And although generally they mean the same, popular references notes that through his stripes, watch this, and that we are healed physically. And through his death on the cross, we are saved from our sin. Beloved, the spiritual pain of the people was caused by sin. But God be praised. Such pain was eliminated through Christ's pain and suffering at Calvary. His death and resurrection lifted believers everywhere from the pain of sin to the power of salvation and deliverance through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well now, Deacon Bradley, at Christmas time, despite the pain of loss and sorrow that we may have experienced in this life, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have a reason for joy. As a matter of fact, there are many reasons that the faithful can find joy despite the losses they have that, that, that we have experienced over the years. Consider with me the next three points. And just in case, if you don't think I understand what I'm talking about here, I'm number 11 of 11 kids. And but five of us left. I've walked behind six caskets. I've walked behind two more, mamas and daddies. I've walked behind uncles and aunties. Come on, come on, somebody. I've walked behind best friends, high school people that I went to school with. They're gone. I know what this is like. Ain't nobody trying to pretend like, oh, you did, just get over it. No, the devil is a lie. It doesn't work like that. But what I want you to know is you don't have to drown. God still has a plan for your life. God still has a purpose for your life. Yes, you love them. Look, I don't believe nobody who love your mama more than I love mine. Hello, somebody. But my mother's in heaven today. And if I could see heaven, I bet she's saying, preach, baby, preach. She's cheering me on. Keep running your race, Shelton. It ain't over yet. My race is over, but yours is not over. You've got work to do. Nugget number one. Here we are. In spite of our loss, the birth of Christ teaches us to place the anchor of our hope in God. Not in people, places, or things. Hello, somebody. Sometimes the death of a loved one becomes a real test to see if you're going to keep going on, to see if you're going to keep on keeping on serving the Lord, all because that loved one is no longer here. I'm a former hospital chaplain, and you're talking about pain. When a woman has carried a baby for nine months, for the baby to be only be born, stillborn. And then you sit with that mother from 12 midnight to 6 a.m. in silence because you're taught to listen, not talk. She don't need a bunch of scriptures right then. She just needs somebody to listen to her. And you said, I sat there until she broke the silence, chaplain. You know, when I got pregnant with this child, I had so many hopes and dreams. And I let her tell her story. And then she said, thank you for being here. It meant so much. And the question is, but what did I do? Her answer is your presence. 
Sometimes the only thing that's needed is just your presence. You ain't got to quote 50 scriptures. You ain't got to come up with reasons as to why God allowed it to happen. Just be present. So, beloved, due to their own sin and rebellion against God, the nation of Israel had lost their freedom to live and worship God as they pleased. And like Israel, there are many who have been so devastated by loss and grief during this time of the year. And sadly, I wonder, they have lost hope in God and in themselves. Sad to say, but too many, like the nation of Israel, have begun to see themselves in the worst way. They just let themselves go. Watch this. Stop combing your hair. Stop washing. Stop taking a bed. Come on now. Stop eating. Come on now. Somebody's got to come alongside this person and say, look, let me help you. I know you feel crippled. I know you feel like you can't make it, but you can make it. You're going to make it. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when you see somebody like that, don't talk about them. Go help them. Sad to say, but too many like the nation of Israel have begun to see themselves in the worst way. They feel as if they have failed miserably and are beyond repair. Too many have given up hope on their visions, their dreams, because they have wasted so many years not being or doing what they know God has called them to be or do. And yes, that can happen if I, watch this, here it is, if our hope is misplaced. What do you mean, Pastor? If we have placed our hope in any person, place, or thing, we have misplaced it. The reality of life is this. People can and will let us down from time to time. Amen, carpet. Places and things can and will change from time to time. That son or daughter was never supposed to be our anchor. That girlfriend or boyfriend was never designed to be our anchor. You're my rock. Stop that. Our mom or dad was never designed to be our anchor. I know this is tough, but it's good medicine for somebody. Our brother or sister was never designed to be our anchor. Our husband or wife was never designed to be our anchor. That does not make them to be any less important or lovable. No! Our job, business, or career was never designed to be our anchor. Our loved ones, here it is. Our loved ones are frail, fragile, human. Are you ready? And temporary. Come on, somebody. We think people going to live forever. Watch this. Tell your neighbor, we're not. We're not. One of these days, we all got to go. Whether we want to admit that or not. They're here today, and guess what? Gone tomorrow. So what can you do? Love them while they're here. Be good to them while they're here. Look out for them while they're here. Take care of them while they're here. Serve them to the best of your ability while they are here so that when they're gone, you're not trying to take them out of the casket. Or jump in the grave with them. I remember at one funeral service, the woman was acting all kind of crazy. I can't live without it. I can't live without him. And try to jump in the grave. The funeral director said, let her go. Let her go. Let her jump. <laughs> She'll be crawling out. <laughs> and watch this. Soon as they let her go, she came to herself. It's not your turn. I know you love them. I know you're going to miss them. I know you're not going to think you can make it without them. But God is going to help you. He's with us, and he's going to help us. Shh. 
the only person who can claim infinite stay in power, untouched by the chilly cold fingers of death, is who? God himself. Here it is. When Jesus was born, light came crashing through the darkness of our sin. Shame and rebellion ushering into our lives thus came crashing through the darkness of our sin, shame and rebellion. And that light came into our lives, the son of the living God, the savior of the world, giving us the eternal anchor, the eternal anchor, the eternal anchor for today and all of our tomorrows. <sighs> when my mom died, oh Jesus, Lord have mercy. I was a prison chaplain at Harney Correction Facility, directing the choir. I'm just going for it. And uh, I was the chaplain at the time. And the officer just walked right into the room. Chaplain Murphy, yes, sir, your mama died. <laughs> Deacon Moore, he lost his job, but here's my point. It was as if somebody took a sword and cut me in the belly. And I just fell to the floor. I mean, the news was so devastating. And nobody, he didn't warm me up to it. They just hit me with it. Bam! And when I realized what had happened, I was on my knees weeping, sobbing, crying. And see, the way I roll, once I get a good cry out, I don't know when I'm going to cry again. That's just the way it works. I'm not that person who's going to cry forever. But once I get a good cry out, whew, okay, wake up, Shelton. Take care of business. It's time to take care. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's how I'm, up, that's how, that's how I'm wired. My sisters and brothers, they're not wired that way. So they ask, didn't you love my? Yes, I loved her more than you. I did more for her than you ever did. But my point is, she's gone now, and I know where she is. So my point is, she was, I felt like she was my rock. I felt like she was my anchor. If anybody loved me, if anybody was praying for me, I know my mama had my back. So when she was gone, it felt like there was a cool breeze at my back. Like I didn't have nobody who had my back. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But then I heard the Lord say, I got you. I got you. When your mom and dad is no longer there, I got you. And that's when I realized, God, you are my rock. You are my anchor. And I don't have nobody else that I can really depend on like I can depend on you. If you haven't learned it, learn it quick, fast, in a hurry. The only person who we can really depend on and will be untouched by death. It's God himself. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. When Jesus was born, his birth ushered in the hope of being forgiven. Hallelujah, somebody. His birth ushered in the hope of healing and restoration. His birth ushered in the hope of having a new life. How many of you glad you got a new life? His birth ushered in the hope of knowing God is with us and will never leave us nor forsake us no matter what happens, come hell or high water. God says, I got you. His birth ushered in the hope that our sinful lives could be changed and transformed for all eternity. That's why the songwriter says, my hope is built. On not what you say on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is what? Sinking sand. Nugget number two. In spite of our loss, the birth of Christ teaches us that. Despite the disappointments of life, how God is faithful to make a way 
out of no way. How many of you have witnessed that over the years? <sighs> Stay with me. Beloved, <laughs> when Mary and Joseph finally made it to Bethlehem, to Bethlehem to pay their taxes, what a disappointment they had when told there was no room. In the end, you got this nine-month pregnant woman. Come on, somebody. And nowhere for her to sleep. The only thing that was available for Joseph's bride to be and pregnant fiance was a barn with animals. But even in this disappointing situation, God was faithful to make a way. And I know it's hard to believe, but like Mary and Joseph, even in the midst of our disappointments, there is always hope. There is an old saying that behind every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And the songwriter says, there's a bright side somewhere. Reverend Spellman, in our disappointments, God is faithful to show us his grace. In our sickness, God is faithful to show us his wisdom and his healing power. In our tragedies and setbacks, God is faithful to speak boldly to our situations, giving us the hope that he's got our back. That hope is rooted and grounded in the promises of his word, Deacon is with me. And the covenant that God makes with us uh, keeps us going, knowing that, God, we have a covenant. We have an agreement. We have his eternal, unchanging, and unbreakable word that he will make a way for us out of no way and be a bridge for over all of our troubled waters. Therefore, even if life gives us disappointments, we don't give up because we know that our God is still on the throne. And he's able, come on and help me somebody, to do what? Exceeding, abundantly, above all that we could even ask or think according to the power that works within us. Remember, God never takes more than he leaves behind. Did you hear me? When he took daddy, that was hard. But I had to look around and see who he left behind. We still had mama. I still had all my brothers and sisters. I still had all my kinfolk. You follow me? He took one, but he left 20. Hello, somebody. When he took mama, he could have took us all. But he still left some of us behind to keep the Murphy family moving. Remember, he never takes more than he leaves behind. If he calls a life to be with him in heaven, he leaves us hope and joy to fill the void. He could have taken everyone, but he leaves behind the sons and daughters, children and grandchildren, friends and relatives to encourage and enrich us as we continue our journey to fulfill our life's calling and assignment. What hindered you from completing your assignment? When, you, when we stand before him, he says, what hindered you? And then we say, well, when so-and-so died, I stopped. Wait. But I called you. I anointed you. I appointed you. I elected you. I selected you. When this died, I stopped. Wait a minute. Who hindered you? We've got to have the made up mind that no matter what happens, God, I've come out here to live right until I die. I love everybody. I love my son. I love my wife. I love my church family. But when everybody up in here goes to heaven, next Sunday, Reverend Murphy got to preach. Come on, y'all. Am I right about it? Let's, get, let's go there. What if I say I can't go no further? Y'all would say, Pastor, that ain't right. I know so-and-so died, but uh, we need a word. Am I right about it? Yeah. Pa Pastor, we, we're still here. We don't, need, we don't want you to die because he died. We don't want you to die because she died. Pastor, you got an assignment. You have a calling. You got to keep on going. And if, it's, and if that's good enough for me, I'm telling you it's the same thing for you. Yeah. Nugget number three, and we're going to be done. We're going to find out who's going to be my team. <laughs> Are we going to find out?
In, our, in spite of our loss, the birth of Christ teaches us that our God is able to turn the pain of Christmas into the joy of Christmas. Beloved, one of the names of the Christ child is Emmanuel, or God with us. And I submit to you that during the season of Christmas, that should be the laser focus of every believer's thoughts, especially those who have experienced or encountered the loss of life or property during the Yuletide season. We may be focused on a death, but God's thoughts are on us. And his plans are active for us. God's thoughts about us go beyond just his ideas about us, but venture to his intention, plans, and purposes for our lives. Unknown to us, but God is constantly working his sovereign plan in our lives. He's working it and thinking of us even when we do not recognize his presence. Sometimes, listen up close, Sometimes that closed door is part of God's plan to direct us to a better open door. Sometimes he allows us to mess up so that we will learn as he teaches us some life lessons and then he'll fix us up. Sometimes he'll allow the painful breakup to help us get on track, mature, and grow up. Hello, somebody. It's all because we are in his thoughts, planning ways to guide us, direct us, teach us, mold us, make us, shape us, and nudge us in the direction that we should go for his glory and for our good. David said in Psalm 139, 17, that he sends up, David says he sends up praise when he thinks about the fact that God is continually planning for us and working his plan for us. When we can't see him operate, but we must hear God saying, you're always on my mind. The pain many feel during Christmas reflects the wounds of doubt, the pain of betrayal, the sting of confusion, the crushing brokenness, the bitter taste of rejection, the gnawing feeling of anguish, weeping and torture of mind, heart, and soul that Mary must have felt at the loss of her son. Here, however, the good news is that she found the strength to look beyond the pain of death and focus her mind on the resurrection of Christ and their, their reunion, which will come when he returns. Our uh, beloved, that thought turns the pain of Christmas into the joy of Christmas. Beloved, we should focus on the holy experience that the angels and shepherds celebrated on that silent night 2,000 years ago. What the shepherds learned on that silent night in Bethlehem was that despite the darkness of night, a child had been born who could turn night into day. Their hopes were lifted because they knew the promised Savior would be able to take the darkness and turn it into light. We may have experienced a loss, but God is still able, and he still sits high and looks low. Our world today rejoices in hope. We rejoice because we celebrate the birth of the Christ child who rises from the midst of the midnight of our times as the bright and morning star. He offers the world an undiminished hope of a better life in this world and in the world to come. To the weak, he offers a strong arm. To the helpless, he offers a helping hand. To the lonely, he offers a comforting word. To the offender, he offers forgiveness and love. To the fallen, he offers the gift of salvation. No wonder Charles Wesley wrote, Hark, herald, the angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Glory to the newborn king who will take the ugly and make it beautiful. He'll take the sad and make it glad. He'll take the difficult and make it easy. He'll take the dull and make it interesting. He'll take the lost and give them light. Uh, 
Mount Gilead, I don't know about you, but I found out that we can move from the pain of Christmas to the joy of Christmas. I found out when we walk with the Lord, the darkest nights are followed by the brightest days. A multitude of blessings follows a great and heavy burden. The sorrow of today is followed by pleasant times of tomorrow. The weakness of the moment can be the blessing of the hour. The difficulty of the day can prove to be the blessing for the weak. W-E-E-K. I found that no matter what comes my way, the Lord is able to make a way out of no way. He's able to lift up the bow down head. He's able to dry the tear-stained eyes. I know the Lord is able. I tried him, and I know him for myself. He proved that he's able by carrying that old rugged cross to that skull-shaped hill called Calvary. He proved that he's able, to come on. When he took the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet, he proved that he's able when he took the crown of thorns on his head and that Roman spear in his side. But more than that, he proved that he's able when he died on that Friday, when the hell on that Saturday took the keys of death, health, and the grave. And early Sunday morning, before the dew drops kissed the rose, before the sun woke up, he got up with all power in his hands. That gives me joy. That gives me peace. That gives me hope. Oh, God tells me that one of these days he's coming back again to receive us to himself. And if you believe he's coming back, somebody come on and help me give him glory. Help me give him praise. Help me give him honor. Am I right about it? Somebody say yes. The God who turns the pain of Christmas into the joy of Christmas. Truthfully, Christmas can be a painful time because of the things and persons that we've lost. Even today, when uh, Doris and myself and Mama James and her sister Darlene, we get together and we go somewhere, we can't help but talk about Daddy James. We just can't help it. It is almost he's on, as if he's on the trip with us. And because God has given us the grace and the strength, look, we love him no less, but we know where he is. Come on, somebody. And I tell you, you would think, you would think he was still alive the way we talk about him. And the way we remember all the funny things he did. Yeah, I remember when daddy said this. I, you, you remember when daddy did this? And I remember when daddy said that. And I remember, see, that right there, remembering and being able to talk about it and laugh about it. That's part of the healing. Are, are you hearing me? And I know some people, you're not ready yet. That's okay. That's okay. But the day will come when God will give you that extra anointing. He'll breathe on you. Am I right, Trina? He'll help you to remember it was painful when your father died. You probably didn't think you and your mama could make it, but look at you now. Yes. Look at what the Lord has done. Yes. Am I right about it, Corey? Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Weeping may endure yes. for a night, but what? Joy. joy comes in the morning. So, Trillis, I know it's fresh, but joy is coming. Hope is coming. Healing is coming. D, I know it's still fresh, but joy is coming. Yes. Hope is coming. God's grace is sufficient. Yes. Anybody else in here lost somebody this year? Will you stand to your feet? You stand to your feet. We want to pray for you. Look at here. Look at here. You're not alone. Just look around. Just look around. Just look around. This is real, baby. This is real. This is real. This is real. It hurts. But God is with us. Emmanuel. God is with us. Will you bow your heads, all those who are standing and everybody listening. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are the God who can turn the pain of Christmas into the joy of Christmas. Lord, this message was not designed to rush anybody's grief. It was not designed to tell them to hurry up and stop crying. But it was designed to let them know that they don't have to stay there. 
that there's a calling on their lives and that they still have an assignment from on high to fulfill and to be and do all that you've created purpose and designed them to be. Everybody who is standing today, we, we pray for added grace. God, we pray for added strength. We pray for added power to help them to look into the hills from which comes all of their help, knowing that all of their help really does come from you. And Lord, in those difficult times, remind them that you are their strength. Strength like no other. And that you will be there with them. You'll never leave them and you'll never forsake them. So we pray that you'll catch every falling tear. We'll pray that you'll massage every lump that's in the throat. God, we pray that you'll dissolve that pit in the stomach. And that you allow the light of your love, your, ho your hope, and your joy to shine brighter than ever in their lives. So that they'll find the grace and the strength to rise up and fulfill their purpose for living. Their purpose for being. And that they'll find themselves helping somebody else as they walk along the way. Crown these individuals with your grace and your strength your anointing and your power for such a time as this. Give them what they need. Everybody is different. But come alongside them, hold their hand, and walk with them through this valley of the shadow of death, letting them know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. God, we ask it in Jesus' name. And we give you praise that everybody shout amen. Come on and put your hands together and give God praise up in here. Keep playing, keep playing. We'll sing it after a while. Keep playing. We'd like to open the doors of the church today. Perhaps there's somebody here who says, Pastor, I need a relationship with God. I want the Lord to forgive me for all my sin. I want him to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I've lost mom. I've lost dad. I've lost a few other people. I know they're in heaven, but I don't want to say goodbye. I want to be able to tell them, I'll see you later. Because as I live for you, Lord, the day will come and I'll get a chance to serve you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Oh, Lord, you are my strength, mm -hmm. strength like no other, oh, strength like no other, reaches to me. Anyone else? Backslider, you want to come to the Lord? You need to be baptized as a Christian. You want to get baptized. You're Christian and you want to join church. Whosoever will, the word of the Lord says, let them come. Let them come. Let them come. Reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace. We're waiting for you. In the power of your name. We lift you up. We lift you up. Oh, we lift you up. Whosoever will, let him come. In the fullness of your grace. Hey, in the power of your name. We lift, we lift you up. Hey, we lift you up. Change it up. You are my hope. You are my hope. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope like no other. Reaches, reaches to me. Anybody need peace? You are my peace. 
You are my peace, mm-hmm. peace like no other, peace like no other, reaches, reaches to me. One more time, in the fullness, in the fullness of your grace and the power of your and we lift you up oh you lift me up in the fullness in the fullness of your grace and the power power of your you lift me up higher and higher you lift me up just the musicians good morning my brother tell me your name and where you're from Dequel Evans and I'm from Norfolk Dequel Dequel Evans from Norfolk why have you come this morning to give your life to Christ or backslide or join church or baptism 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 all right God bless you sir Hey, tell us your name and where you're from. I'm Shana Owens. I'm from Suffolk. Shana Owens from Suffolk. Tell me why you've come this morning. I'm a backslider. Um, I want to get my life back right with Christ. She said she's a backslider and she want to get her life back and right with Christ. Amen. Greta, put your aunt, your hand on her shoulder. To Corey, give her the other side of Iris. Iris, get right here. Okay. Give me that hand. Yeah. Grab it, Iris. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this precious daughter and this precious son who has come to get baptized. That tells us that he already knows you as Lord and Savior. And we thank you for him, Lord God, coming forward, saying, I want to let the world know that I belong to Jesus. But this young lady, God, she says she's a backslider. And we know that you are married to the backslider. She's like the prodigal son, Lord God, who has wasted time and life and ministry efforts. But today, her eyes are open, her ears are unstopped, her heart has been touched, and she is saying yes to you. So, Father, we thank you for your word today that says if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So would you repeat after me? And everybody's going to pray along with you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to cleanse my heart, my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit, my thoughts, my imagination, my desires, that I might be the woman of God that you have created to be me to be. God, I need you. I want you in my life. In the lamp book of life. Of life. So that when this life so that when this life is over. Is over. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Heaven, heaven will be. Will be. My eternal. My eternal home. home. Now Lord. Now Lord. I want to grow. I want to grow. And get strong. And get strong. In you. In you. So help me. Help me. To grow. To grow. And become. And become. That faithful. That faithful. Woman disciple. Woman disciple. Come on and celebrate, 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 celebrate. Oh, come on, let's get happy, somebody. Would y'all take them? Go with them. Yeah, you lift me up in the fullness, in the fullness of your, come on, let's stand, everybody. In the power of your name, hey. You lift me up. Mm -hmm. You lift me up. Were you blessed on today, somebody? You know, the enemy tried to uh, talk me out of sharing this. Uh, 
because it just doesn't seem like it's a Christmas message, you know? But the truth of the matter is that um, Christmas is hard for some people. I mean, it just is. For the reasons what, that we have just spoken about. And so I believe God wanted that word to help somebody today so that you'll have a joyful Christmas in spite of your loss. Can we say man, somebody? Because loss is a part of life, just like blessing. Am I right about it? Amen, amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Not trying to minimize our loss, not trying to minimize our love for those whom we lost because those flames still burn bright for mom, for dad, for that husband, for that wife, for that brother, that sister, that uncle, that aunt, that son, that daughter, whom we've lost along the way. But Lord, we want you to know that the flame that burns the brightest is the flame that burns for you. Because we realize that you are our rock and you are our anchor. So may we continue to forever draw nearer and closer unto you. May we continue to love you more and more even as the days go by. May we always look unto the hills from whence comes our help and our strength. For you alone, God, you are our strength. So, Father, we pray your divine protection, your divine provision, your divine presence, and, God, your divine power to rest, rule, and abide upon these thy precious people this day, henceforth, and forevermore. Now unto you, God, you're the only one who's able to keep us from falling, from stumbling, giving up, giving out, giving in. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, rulership, authority, and all sovereign power, both right now and forevermore. And all the joyful people, in spite of your losses, you opened your mouth and said, Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a great week, Mount Gilead. Be safe. Love you.